it took long enough. But the Big Ten is officially playing football in 2020. And this is a decision that should never have had to have been made had it not been for horrible, horrible leadership and planning from the Big Ten leaders and administration. So let's take a look at the timeline of events leading up to this monumental decision for the Big Ten to begin their season on October 23rd. And then we will break down what this decision means for the rest of the college football season. So on August 5th, if you recall, the Big Ten released their new and updated schedule. We came out with our updated Big Ten predictions, we broke everything down, and everything seemed ready to go for the Big Ten to begin play in September. Six days later, less than a week after they released their updated schedule, the Big Ten canceled their season. On August 11th, six days after they released their updated schedule, the Big Ten canceled their college football season. The Pac-12 was right behind them. The Big Ten thought that in doing so, they were going to force the other Power Five conferences' hand. They thought that in canceling their season amid coronavirus concerns, that the SEC and the ACC uh, and the Big 12 would all decide to follow in their footsteps, and then we wouldn't have a college football season at all. And the SEC and the remaining Power Five conferences said, absolutely not, we're playing, you're crazy, we're going to try to do this thing. And so far, even though the SEC has not hit the field yet, so far, things have worked out pretty dang well. September 3rd, the college football season starts. South Alabama takes on Southern Miss. Austin P. prior to that, takes on Central Arkansas. We have countless games over these past few weekends and not too many major coronavirus outbreaks. Yes, we have had some postponements. We've had some games that have been postponed due to COVID outbreaks. But nothing all too major. On September 16th, the Big Ten announces that they are going to come back play football in 2020 with an eight-game season with the Big Ten title game slated to be played on December 19th. So in about a month's time, we went from releasing a new schedule, we're playing football, to we're not playing football at all, to, okay, now we're going to play football again, but we're going to start near the end of October. It's been a wild, wild series of events, guys, but we as college football fans and many of you as Big Ten fans can rejoice that we now will get to see some of our favorite teams in action. The likes of Ohio State and Penn State, Michigan, Michigan State under Mel Tucker, Rutgers under Greg Schiano, Minnesota, Wisconsin, the entire Big Ten slated to play. There's not a single team right now that plans on sitting out. So what does this mean for the college football season, guys? What, do, what does this mean considering that by the time the Big Ten starts play on the weekend of October 24th, many some games are going to be played on October 23rd, that Friday, when they go into that week, the SEC, many teams will be entering their fifth game of the season. Many teams in the ACC will be entering their seventh game of the season. And many teams in the Big 12 will be entering their sixth game of the season. So some of these teams, guys, are going to be very deep into their season so far. Many games under their belt, and the Big Ten is just going to be kicking things off. Once again, I don't blame a single school for this issue. I blame Kevin Warren and the Big Ten administration, Big Ten commissioner. I blame the NCAA. They tried to play the bully here, and they failed. They failed miserably. The rest of the conferences, even those within the group of five, stood up to the bully. And now the bully is paying for it. It was, it was a horrible, horrible, horrible situation. And it was a horribly managed situation as well. So many questions that are going to arise going into this season. Again, I am thrilled that we have Big Ten football. I am thrilled that we have some of these elite teams coming back and playing. Even if some of those teams are not going to have some of the star players uh, that we're used to seeing. Many players already choosing to opt, to opt out of this season amid coronavirus concerns or just to prepare for the NFL draft. We know the Big Ten is moving to an eight-game conference-only schedule. A ninth game will be played on the day of the conference championship. Obviously, you will have your conference championship game. The ninth game for everybody else will be based on conference standings. So the second-place team in the East and West will play each other, third place all the way down to seventh place. That game really is not going to matter much outside of the championship game. So an interesting you know, decision there. 
My million dollar question is, will we see a Big Ten team get into the college football playoff? Does this affect the college football playoffs committee uh, rankings? Does this affect the Big Ten's playoff chances in any way? Uh, Does the late start affect them in any way? I'm going to go out and say that it probably doesn't. How could it? They're starting much later in the season. That's odd. It's unfortunate. But they're playing an all-conference slate, just like the SEC is doing, and basically exactly like the Big 12 and the ACC are doing. The Big 12 and ACC uh, each playing that one non-conference game. Uh, But outside of that, the rest of their schedule is against conference opponents. The Big 10 is adapting the same method as the SEC, and I can guarantee you that the college football playoff committee is not going to leave out an SEC team. So while it is a little different, if the schedules line up the way it should, where the elite teams are playing each other, or where as long as you're playing everybody within your division, as it would be in a normal season, there shouldn't be any issue here in terms of getting a team like Ohio State or maybe even a Penn State uh, into the college football playoff in 2020. Uh, So I don't think that's going to be a huge issue. I know that's a major concern for some people, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. Uh, The one thing that is going to be interesting is one of two things. First, how do you rank these teams? Up until October 23rd, we are going to have to start ranking. I presume we're going to rank everybody without uh, without Big Ten and Pac-12 teams. We just came out with our first AP poll, the Week 3 AP poll, which did not include any teams from the Big Ten and the Pac-12. So now next week, going into week four, are we going to throw those Big Ten teams back in there? Are we going to wait until towards the end of October to throw those Big Ten teams back in the rankings? Uh, And in doing so, are you going to remove some teams that are are thrilled to be ranked, such as Louisiana, the first time they've been ranked since the 1940s? You know, how how are you going to handle that? Uh, That's something that the AP is going to have to figure out, and certainly that the playoff committee is going to have to figure out as well, because keep in mind, their first rankings come out in the relatively early part of November, where the Big Ten really is not going to be in action for that long. You're not going to really have a good eye test from these Big Ten teams that early on in in their season. The second biggest thing is, what does this mean for the Pac-12? The Pac-12 followed the Big Ten. When the Big Ten canceled, right after that, the Pac-12 canceled. Does this mean that the Pac-12 is going to make a return to college football as well? Plenty of players coaches and fans advocating for that. I know out in Los Angeles, uh, many teams are actually gearing up to maybe start practicing again and to resume football activities. Although we do have to keep in mind that with all of these horrible and horrific wildfires uh, that are taking place, especially across the majority of the western part of the United States, the air quality is pretty bad right now. It would not be very feasible and doable and, you know, respectable, I would say, uh, fair to put our athletes out there with such horrible weather conditions uh, and such horrible air quality, to put them out there to practice and then let alone play uh, in those conditions. So that's something to keep in our minds uh, as well and something the Pac-12 will have to consider as well because if the Pac-12 wants to come back and play college football, they're going to have to do it uh, around the same time of the Big Ten, if not earlier. And I think they want to have any chance because, again, the Big Ten championship game is slated for December 19th. The College Football Playoff Committee releases their final set of rankings, which includes the top four teams for the playoff, on December 20th, the very next day. So the Big Ten may be forcing the Pac-12's hand here. And I know many Pac-12 teams and fans and players and coaches are going to be just so angry, so frustrated, uh, if every other Power 5 conference is playing football except for them. So it is a very historic week in college football. Again, it's been such a wild season already, and we're just now entering week three. The Big Ten going to resume in about a month's time, and they're going to greatly shape the landscape of college football this season. Greatly shape it, because we know Ohio State is going to contend for a playoff spot. Same can be said for Penn State. Maybe Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota as well will be challenging for those spots. So they're going to greatly shape the landscape of college football in late October. So you've got to take everything with a grain of salt going forward because when the Big Ten starts playing, everything changes. Everything changes. So a very historic decision. Yet again, something that I am happy about, something that I know many of you are happy about. Maybe it's not the right decision, but from a financial standpoint, from a player standpoint, from a fan standpoint, it certainly is. 
And at the end of the day, what it means for us is we have more football. We have high-quality football coming our way very, very soon to continue to try to fill this void in what has been just, again, a wild and unpredictable 2020 season. And we're less than a quarter of the way through. So, guys, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert. A brief update, I know, uh, on these Big Ten decisions. Uh, I know it just came, the news came out yesterday, and we're trying to get to it as quick as we can. Uh, so thank you for keeping us updated on that, and thank you for staying with us. We try to bring you as many updates on that as possible. Make sure to stay tuned for the remainder of this week. We have one more game of the week analysis coming out tomorrow. Certainly a game that I can promise you do not want to miss. A very fun one on Saturday morning. Uh, and, of course, on Sunday, we'll be out here with our Week 3 recap, and then we're gearing up for Week 4 of college football. So once again, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert. Oh,